I'm glad he took me up on my invitation to join me in the studio. Please take a seat. Hello and welcome back. My name is Clive from Clive's Art. And today I'm going to spread this particular lesson over two episodes, I think. Um, and what I want to talk about now is something that's been um, requested and I've had loads and loads of comments about you know the paint isn't running properly it's not flowing correctly all that, all that type of stuff and it's not working for me and acrylic is a funny medium to get the grips with you can't over thin it but then again you can't use it too thick so you've got to find a happy medium now I don't mean go in the store and find one of these is really happy because this is a happy medium but I've been finding a happy medium in now you mix it that is what they call a flow improver. Now I very, very rarely use this, but as a beginner, it is a possibility that it could improve your painting experience. So if you want to get yourself a small bottle of that, then it comes in different manufacturers, different sizes. Don't spend too much money because there are ways that we can use the paint to its best ability with just ordinary tap water. Um, okay, now. I use deionized water, that makes no difference whatsoever. Deionized means it's pure. You can buy a bottle of spring water, you can boil water out of the kettle, it doesn't really matter whatsoever. It's down to you as personal preference. Now, what I will say is this it does take a lot of practice, and you know, I've said this practice, practice, practice. Okay, so I've got a wet palette set up here. And this is one that I made in a previous episode. It's a, an only conventional palette which you put on your arm and then you mix your paints. But I've just put a little bit of tissue paper and some grease proof paper on it. So I can, excuse me, I can use it as a wet palette. So if you want to come in a bit closer, we'll have a look at actually how thick the paint is as it comes out the tube. So I've just rested my palette onto the table and I'm going to use some paint spray. No, it doesn't matter what colour you use, I'm using this just for the camera's sake. And we're going to squeeze a small amount of paint, just a bit, big, bit bigger than a pea, I would say, or a couple of peas, depending on how big your peas are, and onto the palette. And then I'm going to select a brush, and let's say um, this is a number three medium detail brush. Now, for ease of use, I'm going to put this onto my easel which is positioned just behind me, so I need to spin round. I've already got a canvas up, prepared, ready for the next stage, and that is drying. I've got some uh, grey gesso on that. It's a training uh, canvas. And we need to put the um, palette by there, and if you want to come a little bit closer, and then we'll have a look at the paint as is. So there's the paint, and here is the brush. It's dry, it's just come out the, uh, the rack, there's no water, there's no moisture in it whatsoever, and we'll just go straight in to the black and we'll have a look at how that runs. And already it starts to drag there. So that's on a damp surface. So we what we need to do now is move the palette across. We'll get our canvas up. And what I suggest you do is get a pencil and just draw a square about an inch by an inch, so an inch square roughly, it's not to be accurate. And put your pencil down and then go into your paint. This is raw paint straight over the tube with a brush that's dry, and then I want you to paint that square. straight with virgin paint. Now you can see it's starting to pull by there because you can see the grey coming through it so that's another reason I put grey on. And that's what a lot of people do, they over brush. So this is neat paint so I wanted to fill that square up and as you're doing this I want you to feel how the paint feels to you, how it's feeling off the brush, how it's dragging, it's drying very quickly 
um, because just the nature of the paint itself, as I said, it's um, it's basically a plastic paint. The air dries rapidly if you don't do it correctly, and you can see it still has taken a lot of applications to try to get it to that stage. Now, what we need to do now is wash our brush. Give it a nice wash, get a simple the chin roll. And then we're going to draw another... Where did I put my pencil? <laughs> I lost the pencil. There it is. We're going to draw another square now, next to it. And this time, we're going to use... After we've washed our brush, we tap it off like that. It, get the moisture off it. Now that, that brush has been washed and all it's got is the moisture that's in it from the water. We've taken most of it off with the kitchen roll. Again, go back into your paint, just smooth it out slightly to the side and then go in again and feel the difference. Now just having that little bit of moisture in that brush will make. And again, it's a bit more of a smoother application of paint. And we need to wash our brush again. And then another square. And this time, if you can see all I'm going to do now is I've dried the brush but I'm just going to tip but put the tip of the brush in about halfway up the bristles okay in the water take the excess off there we go and I'm going to mix that now in to the paint and then I'm going to apply that and you need to do this I'm not going into any more water. The only water I've got is the one I picked up now onto the brush, but it's actually in the paint. So I'm not going water, paint, water, paint, water, paint. This is just one dip mixed in with the paint and then painted directly onto the canvas. There you go. And one more square. Now, same principle, there's a little pot about halfway up. Now I'm not taking any moisture off the brush with the tissue paper, I'm just using the water that's on there. Going back into the paint. And I'm mixing that in with the paint, I'm getting it very creamy, it's a very creamy consistency, like soft butter. There we are, there's enough moisture on that, in that paint now, to enable me to paint a lot smoother, and it flows better. And a flow means that you can start a line and it won't... And I'm just picking up the paint again, not going into any water again, I'm just using the paint and the water that's been mixed together on the palette. There you go. And that's, you will feel the difference between it. Doing those stages you'll feel the flow getting a lot easier. And we'll draw another square again now. And you need to do this a couple of times just for practice. Now this time I can go in a little dip into the water paint and 
it's starting to dry. I'm going to go tip again. Dip again. Only a touch. Very, very small amount. So when I say a dip, I generally mean a dip. And again, just a dip back into the paint. Now you can see, or you should do, especially if you were doing this, that that paint is getting thinned out. And the more water you put to that, the thinner that paint is going to be. So this is why I very rarely try to re-dip If I can help it, I want to keep that paint to a certain consistency. Now you can, there's nothing stopping you getting a brush, dipping it in the water like that, and then mixing that into your paint, and getting that paint to a nice creamy consistency. And you can get it, you can you'll always test to see if it's flowing by doing something like that on a bit of scrap paper or a bit of card or or something like that. And we'll do another square now. And then just using no more water, just using the water that's in the paint, and then we can you see how that's flowing and if you're doing this at home you'll find that this is a very useful exercise for painting. And you've got a nice coverage, you've got nice flowability of paint. What you can do is the same principle, is if you get a mister bottle and just mist your paint a couple of times just to put a bit of moisture on, I don't mean go you, you, the, the paint and then you mix that in with your brush or a palette knife, personally I prefer palette knives but if I'm mixing colours I'll use a palette knife, if I'm mixing paint like it's just to get it to the consistency I want. I'll just use a brush and I'll take the excess off the brush onto a bit of kitchen roll and then I can I get a nice flow rate with our paint and this is what you want to try and do there you go and that's all you really need to know about the flow of paint and how much water to put on your paint. So quite an easy lesson there in how much water to mix with your paints. Now some paints have got a little bit more pigment than others and they might need a little bit more water but the, the common um, fact on acrylic paint is you cannot put more than 45% water into the paint because it will break down the molecular structure. You know you need to check my other YouTube videos out for that. But there is a way around it. Again, again, check my I put some links below about medium mix and it's a mix I use instead of water uh, for the paint. So you need to check those links out. They're all underneath. I'll make a specific point of those. Um, and that's all you need about flowability. So we'll do some lessons now that I want you to to do and um, see how you get on with them. But I'll need to know. You'll have to let me know in the comments how you get on. This is all about practice. There's no painting involved in here except what paint you're putting on this canvas. It's all about practice. Okay, so in this part of the tutorial we're going to be looking at blending. Now blending is a way of going from one colour smoothly into another colour. Like my grayscale stick there as you can see. Starting off at white and going straight to black. Sorry, my cat's going a bit nuts here tonight. Are we going to say hello to everybody? Say hello. Say hello. Say hello. Hey, say hello. No, she wants to go down and play. Right. Um, so, same thing. I think we should... Where's my pencil gone? It's fallen down there. Okay, so we need to draw a square. Very roughly. Oh, you decided to talk now, have you? Okay. And I'm using um, a flat. I don't know what number that is. Is a number? I can't see. It looks like a six. What? You want to come up? You want to say hello now? You want to say hello to everybody? Oh, you want to go back down again? Okay. Typical cat. Right, 
same principle we go in to get um, our water and then we're going to moisten the brush very very gently not taking any excess off and then we're going to mix that into the bit of black get that to a nice creamy consistency or you can just get the mister bottle just put add a bit of moisture to it that way so I think if you remember what we did there so um, come down and make a nice oblong shape be a good idea if you did this with me if possible and then all I'm going to do is go straight into the white just pick up a touch of white like that see how much I picked up there only a little bit and I'm going to put that with paint this on the brush and I'm going to paint another oblong how oh, she's climbing up my leg now stop it and you can see it's nice and smooth like that now you can wash your brush And then taking the moisture off the brush, okay, take the moisture off the brush and then just rub down there very, very lightly and move that black into that grey. We're not going to win any awards with this, but there you go. Now the next thing is back into the water, just a touch of water like I showed you, like that. Just touch, just touch back into your black. Put a little narrow band there. Pick up a bit of white. Now a fair bit of white this time and then mix that into that black. Put a bit more black on your brush. A bit more black on your brush. I'm not going into any water, I'm just picking up the paint that's there. Washing my brush now. Taking the moisture off the brush and I'm blending that through. white this time because we don't want too much black and I just it's just the moisture off the brush now mind I haven't touched any 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 water yet and I'm going back into the black because I know the black's already being pre-thinned and I'm gonna mix only touch of black and I mix that in A little bit of black goes a long way, look. Washing your brush. Like I said, I'm not going to win any awards with this. But this is a way of you practicing. And just getting used to blend in and then back into the white blocking that completely up and this is just the moisture again on the brush because we just washed the brush now then now I would go just to get a bit of more water on the brush because it was starting to pull a bit Pulling that grey down through 
into the white and there we got a fairly good grayscale and if you want to get a bit of black then and just go that's around the edge That's a little gradient you can practice. Now, well, the other thing I want you to do is to get um, it's an old um, detail brush like that. You can see it's all the edges is splayed, and so you know you can distress one of these yourself if you wanted to. So I suggest you go into the black, pushing it into the palette itself, and then. Just making little tree shapes, just think of leaves, think of it the shape of a tree, like that, or a bush. Don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. Do you get the idea in just a second? And when the brush is dry like that, it's called dry brushing, so you can track across like that. And we just let that dry. So we've had a look at the paint and how it's thinned and we've also had a look at how we can blend. So you need to practice those two principles. Um, this particular part is called negative space. Everything has a dark, a medium, medium tone and a light tone, highlights and, and secondary highlights, third highlights, first highlights, 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 highlights. And um, you can get complicated. But I don't do complicated. I'd like to simplify things if I can. So I'm going to let that black dry by there just a second. Now you can try if you wanted to um, the similar type of thing. Um, you just get a bit of water, mix it in with your paint, and you can you can do a, a sphere if you wanted to. And be quite loose with this, and just mix it. Go in. And get to use used to using the brush different positions on the handle um, and practice with different amounts of water in the paint. Actually mixing a bit of white into that black now. This is not about winning awards. This is about practice. And the most important thing about painting, especially with acrylics. You need lots of practice. Just play, just play with what if I put this amount of white in? What if I put a bit of what if I touch it with a bit of black? What happens then? You know? And it, what happens if I add just a little bit of water to the end of my brush? Well it flows really well. So you can you you can learn 
by practicing things I guess and the trouble is what we do tend to do is we just jump in and try and paint our favourite cat or dog or rabbit or you know try and paint clouds before we actually understand the actual principles of painting clouds because it's all about shadows and highlights negative space and which is quite easy because on that example there I've already put the negative space in and when you when you paint in things like spheres you should be painting with the object rather than flat like that so touch of water again let's keep that working and then go back into the bit of black bring that down there now. Now at this point I will wash my brush in a bit of kitchen roll and then I will blend that through and I'll touch a bit more white in there Yeah, I made a mistake, oh boy, oh, what am I going to do with that now? I'm not going to worry too much about that because with acrylic it dries really quick and then we can always paint over it anyway. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to let that dry. I've got a bigger brush now which I've just kept damp. There's no paint on this. I'm just going to go very lightly over that. Trying to smooth out those lines that we've made. Dampen the brush again. And you can't make a mistake, and if you do make a mistake, it doesn't matter because all we do in you is is learning to blend and and to get the paint to run for ourselves, and you know. And that's the most important thing. And knowing that light works in certain ways with certain objects, that's another important thing. You know, I'm not painting with my best brushes here, I'm painting with old brushes that they do the same job, albeit a bit iggly biggledy sometimes, but you can see what I'm actually doing and doing there. Now going back up into this painting, now you can do this with green, so I'm taking a bit of black, I'm taking a bit of white, and I'm going to make a mid-tone grey, or a grey around about that area there. And then, keeping it around about this level, um, let's get that, Oop, sorry, around about this level of, of um, flowability then, I'm just... A little bit of paint on the edge of my brush and then I'm just going to go very lightly I'm not doing that that's not what you want to do you want to go very very lightly like that look a very a very light and try not to get rid of all that black and this could be green as I said but I'm working in black and white because I just want to show you the difference mid-tone ranges and things and then you can flick up there like that so I'm pushing the brush up like that now I was on the top I was doing that and now I'm pushing the brush up like that so I get a different effect there we go but I'm not covering all that black now I'm mixing a bit more white to that grey I'm just touching my brush in the water Mixing a bit more white to that grey. I'm just going to check to see if that, yeah, that that look okay. So, and I'm just going to put a bit of light. There you go. 
bit of a lighter colour. And here and there now, not everywhere, just just here and there like that. <clears throat> Going into a bit more light now and I'm making this nice and light. My paint's around about that area there, around about that, with that much water in it. It's not thick and it's not too thin, it's around about that bit. And I'm just going to tap in just a few little bits like that. And then I'm going straight into white and I'm going to take that down again. And this would be like a highlight, and then you just need to put it on the very tip like that. This is obviously more effective with greens, but yeah, you get the idea of how to build up a tree in a quite a simple way. So we've looked at virgin paint with a, cup, a little bit more water in it, so a creamy mix. That's the, that's the mix you want to get, around about that area there. You can use it this area but it'll tend to drag. You don't want to drag, you want a nice smooth consistency. We've uh, worked on some blending, so you can shows you how to blend one colour into another. We've also worked on some shadows, highlights and negative space to give you an idea of how to build up a tree. And I've also worked on a sphere as well. Um, I like to make that look a bit more effective. You could put a shadow in there if you wanted to. To make it look as if it's standing, uh, sitting on a, on a table or something. Effective now. Yep. And um, well, that's it really. All I want you to do now, if you would, is get a canvas and just you can use it just for training completely. Practice, 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 and practice these methods because I promise you, by doing that, it will work for you and make your painting a lot more. Um, of a happy experience so you don't get stressed so much. So with that in mind I'd like to thank you for watching this tutorial. I'm talking a bit quieter tonight because um, it's getting quite late and I don't want to disturb the neighbours because they don't all want to learn about painting and I've got the studio door open so um, I've got a bit of fresh air coming in which is quite nice. So there we go. Viscosity of paints or how much water to add or not to add. Um, Negative spaces, high midtones and highlight example. Obviously, you're using colour and it's a bit more effective. Um, blending from one colour to another, and you can make yourself a grayscale stick if you wanted to. And working on a sphere in the same principle as the cube. Um, and that's um, there we are. That's as simple as that. So practice that. Let me know you get on, and um, I'll see you on the next tutorial. I'm Clive from Clive's Art. Thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you next time. Bye bye. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did making it and painting it, I must add. And um, well, thank you very much for watching. Check me out on Facebook, you can join me on Twitter. Don't forget to check those playlists out, and I invite you to press the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. So, thank you very much for watching. I'm Clive from Clive's Art, and I will see you on the next episode. Bye bye.